Thank you very much. Welcome everybody to the last uh, speech. Uh, I just want to acknowledge the other authors of this work, uh, mainly Eugenio Berrino, which is uh, most of this work was developed during his master thesis. Uh, just a few very uh, quick introduction of the table of contents. So uh, first of all, I will give you some hints about the context of where I will work and the uh, introduction to this. Then uh, I will show you some details about the planning and the execution of the in integrated geomatic survey and the post-processing of the deriving data, mainly related to the photogrammetric data processing and the orthophoto generation. Then we, sh I can show you a procedure to f to for the fruition of these products in a GIS environment. And at the end of the presentation, I'm going to draw some conclusions and future perspectives of the work. Uh, so first of all, uh, we performed a geomatic uh, survey campaign of uh, Domus 5, Insula 14, Region 7 of Pompeii Archaeological Park, uh, located in, near Naples in Italy. Um, we collected a very high amount of images and then we uh, processed them through photogrammetry to obtain a 3D model of the site and then the orthophoto. Uh, finally, we make these products available through a, a, G a GIS environment. All of these operations were conducted using free and open source softwares. In particular, we used Micmac, Cloud Compare, and QGIS, plus a non-open source software, which is called Mago, which was developed by Sara Gagliolo, a colleague of uh, Geomatics Lab in uh, University of Genova, which is able to uh, produce high resolution orthophoto. Uh, this work uh, is born uh, thanks to a synergy cooperation between different expertise, in, um, in particular related to geomatics, archaeology, and structural engineering, with uh, different aims. So the archaeological point of view is more interested in uh, the investigation of the destination of use of the several uh, rooms uh, in the site. The structural engineering expertise is more interested in analyzing the state of, uh, of the art in terms of structural safety also, and uh, to study the retrofitting interventions. And from the, our site, the geomatic site, of course, we want to acquire a very accurate survey to produce very nice products to achieve the previous aims of the other two expertises. Here is the context we are looking at. So the dimension of the district area is about 60 per 35 meters square. The complex is formed by three domus and 12 shops. Uh, it is located in the western part of Pompeii, uh, overlooking Via della Bondanza, which is one of the uh, most important ar artery of the, of the site. The focus is in uh, Domus 5. You can see here a zoom on uh, this Domus, which is also known as the House of the Queen of England, which is located again in the Insula 14, Region 7. It is composed by 27 rooms. I just uh, advise you that we are just focusing on one single room, just for brevity. Um, related to the survey planning, we use uh, several and different geomatics techniques to uh, have a check on the quality of the, the, of the deriving product, of course, to exploit also their uh, complementary features, so not to have holes in the survey, in the products, to optimize also the logistics and the timings of the survey operation because the site was open during the, our survey, so we have to uh, to also deal with this, this problem. And um, to have also the, a survey which is uh, uh, from a general view to an uh, increasingly detailed one, so to produce a sort of nested survey, zooming in the details of the site. This guarantees the, the completeness and also the control of the survey. Uh, related to the survey settings, the survey was conducted about two years ago. We used several techniques, as I have already mentioned. In particular, we used uh, uh, terrestrial photogrammetry, aerial photogrammetry, and laser scanning. Here you can see the settings, so the red box uh, 
um, visualize the area where we performed an adiral uh, UAV survey at 40 meters above ground level. Then in the green square, we had an adiral and a tilted survey with a UAV again at 15 meters of uh, height. Then in this smaller area, the laser scanning and terrestrial photogrammetry, the, this last one, which was uh, mainly related to the vertical walls, the frescoes on the, on the walls. And this uh, highlighted in this uh, circle is the room which is studied in more details. Again, we also in this slide, you can see also the position of ground control points and checkpoints that were used to put all the surveys in the same reference frame and also the position of the takeoff and landing pad of the UAV. The employed techniques, again, we use the UAV photogrammetry to a DJI Mavic 2 Pro to have a general overview of the site, then a terrestrial photogrammetry for the vertical walls of Domus 5 through a camera, the Canon EOS 40D camera. The terrestrial laser scanner was uh, uh, performed to um, survey the interiors of rooms, uh, room of Domus 5 interiors, and to uh, collect the position of ground control points and checkpoints, we use both the GNSS in RTK mode and the total station. Here you have some very interesting details uh, on the several techniques uh, we use. Uh, I just want to underline the data set, which is very, very huge. We still not have finished to process it. So it's a very, very huge work uh, for just to, to, to cite uh, some numbers for the UAV photogrammetry. We have more than 1,000 images for the terrestrial photogrammetry, more than 7,000 images. 26 scans of terrestrial laser scanner and 25 collected ground control points or checkpoints through GNSS and total station. Uh, related to timings also, we have uh, just for collect the images, we have two hours for the UAV photogrammetry, 16 hours for the terrestrial photogrammetry, eight hours for the scanning and 16 hours for the several uh, stations of GNSS and total station. Here you can find some nice pictures that can help you to understand in which very nice environment we worked. Uh, we have the privilege to work uh, when also in where the site was closed, so very early in the morning and very late in the evening. Some of the areas were open to the public where we were surveying the, the site, so we have also to uh, to face these, uh, uh, the, 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 per the people that were inside uh, uh, the site and not disturb their visit so much. Um, regarding the photogrammetric data processing, we use the Micmac, which is a very well-known open source software, which is, has very nice advantages related to the rigorousness, maybe mainly in the external orientation and internal orientation parameter estimation and in the desk matching algorithm, and also gives the user the possibility to choose the homologous point search criterion. It has also some disadvantages, of course. So for example, no graphical interface and the, the user should be quite experienced to make it work. Uh, the, the, the product we obtain, uh, the, the, the process we obtain is a multi-scale, multi-resolution approach, uh, which is able also to minimize the outliers and also the noise of the generated point clouds. Uh, the workflow is here listed very quickly. So we extract the tie point, uh, we est uh, estimate the camera positions, and we generate the 3D point cloud through a dense mesh algorithm. Uh, for our case study, we used uh, this, the following processing parameters. So we limited the search of uh, matches into 20 adjacent images because we have a strip geometry. Uh, we made some tests to understand which is the best timings uh, and the best number of images to be uh, processed together. And we found that the best images it best images number is uh, 500 images, which took uh, about 24 hours of processing. And we choose to have uh, 100 common images between two adjacent blocks to make uh, to 
to get the, blo the block uh, together once they are uh, processed. And we uh, consider just one room, uh, just for this example. Here you can see two blocks, uh, which, uh, which are formed by 500 image and 500 image, and this part is the common part formed by 100 images. Um, the scaling and the referencing of the obtained point cloud was done by the ground control points uh, coordinates. In this case, the ground control points are coming from the natural points, uh, which are collected in the laser scanner point cloud, and uh, which coordinates are uh, extracted using the open source software Cloud Compare. Then we use this uh, unpronounceable uh, <laughs> command of Micmac to collimate the um, the, 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 this point in the images to make this command work, we need a sequence of images where the points are digitized and a TXT file to listing the, their coordinates. As an output, we, uh, we obtain an XML file uh, which contains the points and the coordinates, and then we can use this uh, output to apply the roto translation and the scaling to the entire model. Here you can find the location of the chosen point. We choose, for example, 15 points. You can see here in three different rooms also to give a quite robust distribution of the points. The, these are the points in the laser scanner point cloud, and these are the points, the same points, of course, in the photogrammetric point cloud. Uh, we check, of course, the results we obtained comparing the two point clouds. So we obtain about one or two centimeters in the single ground control points, except for the ground control points number six, that should be removed because of a very high residual res with respect to the others. Uh, we aligned the point clouds through cloud compare, as I already said, and we also perform a distance computation, again, in Cloud Compare through the M3C2 algorithm that gives us the senior distance between the two point clouds, the laser scanner one and the photogrammetric one. Uh, to, to compare the two point clouds, we use this algorithm as a reference cloud, we choose the laser scanner one, and uh, with a mm, normal direction, horizontal, uh, horizontally oriented, and we perform this test in, the, in a, a portion of the central world fresco. Here you can see the photogrammetric uh, point cloud, which has spacing of four millimeters, the laser scanner one, which has spacing of one millimeter, and the senior distance. Here you can find the, the, the distribution of the distances in the point, the points, and we obtain an average distances of about five plus or minus five millimeters. So we are quite happy of this result. Um, concerning the orthophoto generation, we use uh, uh, this uh, software, which is uh, developed by my colleague, Sara Gagliolo, during her PhD course. I just want to, to acknowledge that she is the winner of the Autech Prize in uh, 2022 for this work. So congratulations to Sarah. Uh, the, the code is uh, more than 3,000 lines of code in C++. It has a graphical user interface, uh, very simple, realized in Qt. And it also exploits uh, the open source library OpenCV, mainly related to the matrices and uh, images management. Uh, the main feature of MAGO is that uh, it, it is able to overcome the approximation that typically is introduced by a mesh as a representation of the object. So we can produce through MAGO uh, high resolution orthophotos with the maximum resolution equal to the ground sample distance. Uh, the workflow is very simple. You can, find, you can find it also in some references you can find in the paper. So the, the first step is the definition of the orthophoto plane, which is parallel to the wall plane. Then the acquisition of uh, internal and external orientation parameter of the image you want to produce the orthophoto the definition of the orthophoto dimension and the resolution, and uh, the automatic definition, definition of ancillary reference system, which is uh, useful to um, uh, make uh, also to the user understand the position and the visibility of the points. Then uh, there are 
uh, other two steps. The first one is an iterative automatic process that uh, is able to determine the best plane given by three points that uh, is uh, defined by the intersection of the collinearity rays and the point cloud. And then it, uh, the, the, the procedure automatically generates a mesh directly from the point cloud. So you don't have uh, any further simplification or resampling. But you just build an adaptive mesh uh, at the highest uh, possible resolution. Finally, the color of each pixel is projected into the image, into the orthophoto map. Here you can find the, the one of the latest uh, update of uh, Mago, which was uh, updated to um, produce all sorts of photos for non-complanar planes. So you, when you have walls that are forming an edge. Uh, so this is done by introducing a rotation uh, to place the two walls along the same, uh, the same plane. So you can see, for example, a perspective view of uh, a wall here and another wall here, which uh, they form an edge here. You have the orthophoto of, of the first, uh, of the first wall on the second wall, and then you can put all together just enrolling them. Regarding the fruition of these products, uh, we create a QJS project to include both the planimetric view and the altimetric distribution of the data. So we in some way created a 2D plus one GIS environment. Here you can see, for example, the 3D perspective view of three walls of a room. And then we develop this cube into three planes where we have an x-axis okay, related to, this, uh, to each orthophoto and then a y-axis that is the z-axis in the 3D environment. Uh, this uh, uh, procedure was realized by, through a master-slave architecture in QJS. So we are able to uh, manage two different uh, reference frames. The first one, which is the traditional planimetric one, when you can visualize the x-y um, coordinates and then one related to the vertical plane of the walls. So you can display the orthophoto and, uh, and also have some information about the artimetric data. The master project is dedicated to the XY plane and uh, contains some uh, polylines representing the, in this case, the perimeter of the Domus 5 room walls. Each slave pro um, project is dedicated to a specific walls as in it uh, a corresponding orthophoto projected in an XYZ plane, and it is, it is connected to the master, um, master project through a QJS action. Uh, in reality, we produce two QJS action. The first one is very simple, so you click on the, on the borders of the, of the room and you open the corresponding orthophoto and then to this uh, instruction you can open the slave project so you just have to simply insert the, the a windows action type connected the path to the qjs x and the path to the project folder and then we produce the uh, column name project which is the the project you want to point to to be open um, each slave project, uh, project contains the orthophoto of the walls, of course, uh, and three uh, shape files, one point, one line, and one polygon shape file. The, these three shape files are set in a way that the attribute table is uh, automatically updated once uh, you uh, insert a new geometry. So you, are, you have a very quick exam example of the... Of the um, of the, 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 the slave project related to a wall, and then uh, some details of uh, the, the table. So the table is updated to have the image coordinates of the shape file, and also the real world coordinates, so the ETRF, uh, UTM33, uh, X, Y, and Z of the clicked point on the orthophoto. Through this relation, you can see them in the, in the paper. Um, so this is just for uh, for the for just an example. The same for the length, uh, the line shape file. So we automatically create a, a line, and so we can compute uh, its length. 
uh, automatically and the same for uh, the polygon shape file. So we can compute the area and the perimeter of, uh, of, um, of this uh, shape file automatically. We also performed a supervised classification of, uh, of the wall based on the state of conservation using the very well-known uh, EGEN-SIG and imax leak uh, uh, grass commons. So in the table you can see the area cover uh, in both in uh, percentage and uh, in uh, square meters. The, areas, uh, the training areas are user-defined, but you can, of course, obtain this kind of classification. And finally, we verify the planarity of the wall, again, by producing a DSM of uh, a specific part of the wall and uh, just uh, computing the distance between th this produced DSM and uh, a vertical plane. So we obtain that there is a sort of deviation which can be maybe related to a not vertical reference frame. We have to, um, to deepen this aspect again. So just for concluding uh, very quickly, uh, we showed the contribution of geomatics to archaeology by these uh, processing and survey techniques and innovative approach. Uh, we performed a nested survey and also a nested fruition of products in some way through this uh, master slave uh, um, uh, architecture, which is able to uh, give to the user the possibility of uh, making measurements on orthophoto and also visualize them. Um, we very quickly see the classification orthophoto and the evaluation of the deviation of the wall. And uh, the main point in my opinion is that a structure like this is very useful for the realization of a database of the entire site. And also it can be used by non-expert users in geomatics, which will be very interesting also for archaeologists, for example. I thank you very much and I am available for any questions.